Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Perry here and I appreciate you stopping in to check out today's video. Today we're going to get into the topic of a coral feed program that was developed by uh, Alan Vo. He is uh, the son of uh, Hung uh, Vo and uh, that would be Hung's uh, rainbow. Uh, so if you remember that particular smooth coral, uh, you will know that that's one of the more elusive, uh, hardest to color, and um, I've had a crack at it and admittedly uh, did not pan out well for me. However, the tank wasn't humming along like it is now, and so let's get into a little bit of that. So last summer, about a year ago from uh, right now, uh, I, Alan and I began di dialogue and Alan was wanting to know a little bit more about uh, sort of my philosophy of using bacteria and some of the products that I was using and um, was interested in learning a little bit more about them. Now, I'm, I'm pretty certain that Alan already had a history of knowledge. I think he might have been just trying to uh, correlate uh, additional information resources and was trying to you know kind of connect dots for himself but uh, and I'm quite positive that uh, I wouldn't be the only uh, reef keeper out there that Alan uh, was communicating with but anyway Alan was in development of a, a coral food um, and and he really was interested in, in trying to understand uh, you know like what I was onto at the time of the concept of uh, phosphate and how the corals were, were getting it and I was um, I was already on to this idea of bacteria uh, and, and this was all going back to some videos I watched uh, with uh, Lou Eckes, shout to, to Tropic Marin and him uh, and some of these ideas and concepts of, of essentially the coral needing phosphate and, and, and it, how it would get it into the coral um, you know, I think we as reefers arbitrarily thought that the, the, the coral might just ingest somehow uh, in from the water column uh, this PO4. But um, what Alan and I were on to talking about was this idea that uh, bacteria was what was uh, delivering the phosphate. So the bacteria was, it was sort of the mechanism or the transport, if you will, of getting the uh, rich phosphate food to the coral. And so what Alan was really kind of um, going further out on, and he went way further with, with this concept, uh, but how I kind of tipped myself off on the idea was just understanding the way corals fed in the wild, which is on mainly zooplankton. And so when you understand what zooplankton mainly consists of, it's free uh, floating algaes. And so when you start to depict, well, what is the free floating algae? Well, what does that consist of? It consists of phosphate right mainly or phosphorus however you guys want to look at it I'm not going to get I'm not scientific so I'm not going to get too far in depth with it I understand the concept uh, but if you're looking for more of that that scientific breakdown guy uh, you could probably find those guys out there I'm not that guy I just have real world experience and knowledge of using this so if I use terminology out of context forgive me but anyway um, as I digress here um, the, the, the concept being that zooplankton rich in PO4 was the mechanism on the reef where these corals mainly got their food source from, right? And so uh, algae, of course, you know, free-floating um, uh, single-cell algae, I believe, is what they would be feeding on, right? And then that, of course, would be um, what zooplankton would be feeding on. And in turn, uh, zooplankton is what corals would be feeding on, or ac small polyp corals, uh, acros in this case, or, or any stonies, if you will. So with that in mind, um, uh, Alan and I thought, well, in a closed environment, it, it would be really hard to simulate like live zooplankton on a perpetual basis. Um, now, those systems probably do exist on farms and whatnot, but in, in, in a simple home hobby based system, it, it's really going to be kind of hard to, to get there. And so, uh, you know, he was really wanting to understand my ideas behind bacteria and why I was so using um, probiotic bacteria, why I was such a, a, a big, um, I guess, voice in the community, in the reefing community, um, about probiotic bacteria. And why did I choose to use uh, mainly, you know, rebiotic at the time and uh, probiOS and, uh, from aquaforest. 
and what was the reasoning behind it. And, you know, so we started to go deeper into the ideas of uh, what enzymes also do in, in that interaction. And, um, and that's where we started, he started really stumbling onto KZ um, Zeozyme as a, as a product in that original blend. And what that was doing is it's more of a pre-digestion, right? So if you think about us when we eat food, and this is kind of what we, Alan and I were talking about, and I was like, well, look, Alan, you know, like when, when food is going into your, into your mouth, uh, amylase, which is a digestive enzyme, begins to do work as a pre-digestive type of way. And, and I think where Alan really took this and just went with it and did a phenomenal job of development is he decided... I want to see if I can get all of these rich phosphorus, coral foods, a slurry, if you will, throw all of these things together and then use some sort of an enzyme as a pre-digestion, a way of, of, of breaking these things down um, and, and getting it to the reef in a simpler, uh, easier to capture form uh, by uh, the small polyps on, on these acros. And also, uh, what that would mean beyond um, uh, acros and all of the filter feeding animals within the system. And we were really on this thing where it was, you look past the coral sea, you know, look into deeper into the system, look into the microbiome, right? Really look into your setup and, and how are you running it? And are you creating an environment uh, where, where this bacteria is, is able to, to really flourish and grow? And so these were some of the ideas that we were, were buzzing around on. And um, Alan did a, a tremendous job of, of creating sort of a, uh, an all-in-one encompassing bacteria, probiotic bacteria uh, with digestive enzymes uh, to help in the uh, pre-digestion and breakdown of those uh, coral uh, or those uh, phosphate-rich foods that he put into that particular product. And I, I know one of them that I, I picked up right on right when he sent me the product to, to, to sample. I picked up on one, and, and I won't list it here because it would be out of bounds for me to talk about something that's not my formula. But I was pretty sure of one of them, and, uh, and I was correct. But at any rate, um, what he has designed here is a food that, that really is going beyond uh, coral feeding. And so let's get into the part two of... Uh, CRT's concoction and, and what I'm seeing on my reef, okay? So given that I, I use uh, probiotics and I will certain uh, use and implement at time to time different products and do different strategies at a moment's notice, uh, it's sometimes hard to quantify what is doing what on, on my reef. So I didn't want to come right out after, you know, the first few feedings and say, hey, it's it's killer product, you got to buy it. Um, I really want to take the time to understand how it's impacting my system. So, you know, I've been at it for two or three weeks now, and um, I am starting to see um, I, what I believe outside of my system maintenance program and my ideology as far as how I run my, my tank. I believe what I am seeing is some sort of a an, an, an impact um, that's on a level that that is trending with color, but it's it's more from a total coral health perspective. Uh, I'm seeing polyps that are extending uh, further than what I've seen. I'm seeing um, I'm seeing new growth shoots. I'm seeing corals that are popping out of dormancy. Now you have to also keep in mind that the system was already trending in a really really good direction anyway, but it seems as if this has increased the metabolism in the system. Now I can't quantify that for, for this video because I haven't tested ALK in a couple of weeks, but I would bet that I probably have dipped into the lower sixes. If I were to guess, I have probably started dipping because as I look into the system, I see so many new growth shoots happening on all the corals, particularly tenuous, um, extension in, in polyps, new growth in areas on corals that were, were, were not exhibiting growth of any type, uh, new nubs, which means, you know, future potential growth. Uh, and overall, um, with the polyp extension, it's telling me that whatever is, is the concoction and design in it uh, and, and the total products being used, which Alan has been very um, 
forthcoming about. So that's another cool thing is he, 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 he's got the research and all of the data um, of how and why and, you know, and going into holobiont bacteria. And I mean, dude, Alan is really gone on such a deep dive and simultaneously as he was diving like this, I was diving into the soil world. And so while he was in development of what he was doing, I too was, was sort of in development of what I was doing. And, um, yeah, you know, um, uh, I sort of, um, let the tank go into cruise control for a while and, um, and I uh, started focusing on, on the, the new year coming, the new summer and, and raised bed gardens and the soil and, uh, you know, what that microbiome was all about. And it, it was interesting because I hadn't talked for Alan since then because he was obviously busy in design of his product. And, um, yeah, so, so he, um, he ended up designing it and going to market or production with it. I should say, I don't know about market yet, but, um, I, I'm really liking what I'm seeing and how it fits into my style of, of reefing. Uh, I believe it's more on the organic based side. Uh, he shares a very strong uh, passion for uh, homeopathy as well as natural foods and natural um, uh, like ferments and things of that nature. Uh, so, so we definitely see a lot in the same way. And I think that's what, what started our dialogue. Now, again, I, I'm not going to... Um, place any any claims at anything other than I was just there to hopefully give Alan some ideas and a different way of looking at things uh, and help uh, him uh, in design of, of the concoction. Uh, so by no means did I have anything to do with what Alan did. He, he has um, uh, created a, a really cool product that um, I believe for me the way it will be used moving forward will be primarily in my frag system mainly because that system uh, does not have any life in it other than the frags and a couple pieces of uh, live rock that were from the sun. So with that in mind my idea and my, my thinking is that uh, if I dose there it, invariably it will make it into the main system because I don't use filter socks and some of it will move past uh, the protein skimmer. In fact, I disable the protein skimmer when feeding it anyway. And so I will deliver it or dose it into the frag system, uh, but I will allow it to creep into the main system, but primarily be using it to dose the frag system moving forward. And I'll be using that as a targeted food and a way of boosting the microbiology in that environment, that small micro environment, because regardless of whether they're connected or not, it's creating its own environment as this system that you're looking at here has created its own. So, you know, as I look at the clock here, we're now at, um, at 12 minutes. I think that's rather reasonable. Uh, what I will do now is sort of talk about the transition of how I'm dosing it. Um, I just talked about how I'm using it now in the frag system. Uh, so uh, what I will do with it is I will actually mix it in a, um, in a small plastic pitcher using a little acrylic rod. Uh, I think the little pitcher holds like maybe, um, you know, maybe a quart uh, or maybe maybe two quarts, I believe, of water. I, I put about a quart and a half, I guess, you know, maybe a liter of water in it. And then I just take a, about a gram of that, that and just look at it. And I take like, you know, just like a putty, little putty size piece, about a fingernail size piece, a chunk, a little ball, um, about the size of a fingernail, I should say. Uh, the system, you know, it's 112 plus the little frag system and a, a 75 gallon sump. Um, you can do the math, 200, I guess, would be a good idea. Um, and that's what I'm delivering to the frag system now. Now, I have dosed it into this main system, and sometimes I do a split dose where I put some of it in here and some of it out there. Uh, but given the nature of how well uh, this system is just doing right here in front of you, um, I don't know that um, I don't know that there's anything really lacking, uh, but it's definitely helping the total system. And so, when we get into coloration and coral health, um, you know, I think where Alan and I were really on the same page was looking into um, not numbers and not tests and things of that nature. Those are just just quantifying what what our eyes are telling us. He's an observation guy. He uh, studies the corals. He spends great detail and time capturing videos of, of the feeding mechanisms and the slothing of uh, mesenterial filaments post-feeding. Uh, so, so he is certainly 
um, a, a, uh, a wizard and he's young but he was groomed as, as a young man, uh, as a kid really and we've talked about some of that so I mean this dude really knows his shit and um, I'm, I'm proud uh, to call him uh, you know, a reef buddy, somebody who I occasionally interact with um, and I'm, I'm proud that he was uh, able to reach out to me and ask me to, to, to try the product and um, so far, uh, I like I my last I could if I could put it on the screen, I would show you my last interaction with him was, um, hey, buddy, um, you know what do I need to do to procure this product moving forward? So that speaks for itself. And what I meant by that was procure it for me to buy. I want to make sure I clarify that because you know I'm not tethered to anybody, and I want to make sure that if I do ever accept those kind of deals or sponsorships that I never compromise the person who I am as a result of it. Uh, I like Alan's um, integrity and the way he reefs and the way he is. Uh, so, you know, his product, the way he is as a reefer, uh, his outlook on the product, his cleanliness of products in use, uh, and what he's designed in the concoction uh, aligns exactly with my outlook. So that has a large bearing on the products that I choose to use. And so with that in mind, I just want to say that um, I, I see no reason uh, at all uh, to, to use the product on, on a, uh, you know, thanks for the sample basis. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually uh, continue using uh, this product supplementary, you know, again, uh, as a way of uh, feeding the frag system primarily, but having spillover into the main system that you see here. Uh, so that pretty much is it on the coral food. I imagine um, what really speaks to me in the community isn't so much about what one person versus another person says. It's more about what you're able to present. So if you're willing to throw daggers, be willing to throw pictures with your daggers. I always say that because it's important that we can all go out and really knock one, one another down. But to me... I always have said that the proof is really in the results of what you see, whether it be in your physical health, whether it be in your spiritual health, whether it be in your life as you treat others or the way you lead yourself as a person. I would l rather allow that to be shown versus told. So those out there who, who like to make um, you know these, these horrible inflammatory comments and like to depict someone based on a mistake or... Uh, something they have, may have said in their videos, you know, those people typically are influencers. They're the ones out there that are bought and paid for uh, that that cannot run their reefs uh, the way they want to run their reefs. Uh, they're they're uh, they've got a muzzle on them, and um, and they can't speak freely. And on this channel here, I speak freely, and I can speak freely. I'll tell you what I use, why I use it, and I'm not going to go promote it unless I believe in it. And, and that's that. So if you're looking for um, that type of um, uh, bro, uh, good old boy bro network system uh, type of channel, um, goodness gracious, there's plenty of them out there. Uh, I share a similar concept in theory and thought of Coral Euphoria. That dude's the man. And if you really want to know, um, when I talk about a company or I talk about a reefer, um, yeah, th that's because I admire them and, and I show love and respect. Even if you're one of those people out there that, you know, that you, you, you feel that your ego is, is um, uh, needing to be filled um, and, and you want to be nasty about the way you are in your, in your hobby, I still will give you your flowers that you deserve if you're getting the results. So, you know, again, let's put the, the ego and personal feelings aside and, and let's reef on. And as you know, uh, what I present here is, is what I'm doing. It's not what I'm told to do. So I hope you guys can dig that. And I, I'm pretty sure that um, the crowd that I'm trying to create here on this channel, I'm pretty sure they've stopped over here uh, because they might be tired of the, uh, all that other stuff that's out there. So with that in mind, we're going to do some close-ups and wrap this up. All right, and you know, as you can see, we're going to start off on one of my pieces here. That that's the purple snow, and uh, just beneath it is, it, you know, just so you can contrast, right? I want you to see the colors. Hey, look, in the end, I want you to be the judge, not me. 
it, it's what you guys are seeing. What do you think? I mean, do you think the colors are there? I sort of do. I mean, there's the aquamarine jewel. And as far as representation of aquamarine in terms of color, I'm pretty certain that's that's fairly fairly close. Purple, purple snow, pretty purple, right? That's the BC bonfire. There's a fox flame right up in the center. So, you know, right here, let's, there you go. Um, that's the top of my, my uh, SCOP right there, my Sexy Corals Orange Passion. That blue one right there is a Matt V cookie monster right there down the lower part of the screen. I got that from N, uh, NSB Reef, my boy Matt. Um, as well as my neutron back, which is that yellow piece you see in the middle there. See that piece right there? I am so happy um, to have reacquired, and this is why you build a, a network. Matt has uh, a lot of my corals, and he also is very nice and gifts me corals back. So, you know, that's that's what this is all about. You build your collection out, right? And And you get to say, you know, I now have a, a Matt V Cookie Monster, which is what, really a cool coral. It's a blue tenuous, and I was wanting that a long time ago. So to, to just get that on a whim, hell yeah. And um, I also got a pink panther from him. He brought back my Neutron. So I'm just like, I'm all like reinvigorated again in the hobby, man. I hope you guys can see it. I know you're feeling like the, the passion and feeling what I'm trying to present here for you and, and developing an Acropora specific channel. You know, um, it's what I've always done since, since literally six months being into this hobby. And I just, I, this is, this is just to me, when I see like this, these sort of views with an Anthea swimming above branches like that, or, you know, the interaction of that shrimp underneath that CC pink highlighter, you know, when I see things like that, I mean, you know, that, that, look at that yellow right there and that, that greenish, you know, Yoda. And there's my Thurman Sublime. I mean, this thing is, is really doing something crazy. So let's take a, a deeper look into it. So look at the colors that I'm pulling on that. It's just insanity. Um, yeah, you know, and then like firecracker, and then this is a TSA coral. I'm really starting to dig this piece. It's a, a Spyro the Dragon, yeah. Now, if you like blue and green comboed together, that's the mother of pearl. And man, what a, what a killer piece. That is something I'll talk about when I get it really firing off. But yeah, again, um, to, to, to sort of rewrap back in, uh, this is, this is the result of, um, a bacteria driven system where the emphasis is on getting the corals food and not really giving a, a, a real damn about nutrients and all of that pursuit of that stuff. It's more about what do I got to do to create an environment where everything is able to feed and feed and feed and feed and that hopefully that shot right there represents the colors and the contrasting of them will show the results and Alan uh, I'm really digging the product I thank you for the sample this is where we're gonna pretty much wrap it up but we'll do just one quick drive-by and by the front and wrap around the front here and I'm going to get off, off my stool here and stop being a lazy ass. And sort of wrap around and just check out, you know, the, the purple. Look at that piece in the waiting. We'll start, we'll talk about it. Don't worry. Look, we'll look a little red there for you. Oh, what's that? I can't talk about that one yet, but I will, you know, side to side, end to end. Like I was talking to Matt this morning. So, people get so stuck on lights. I got reef readers and T5s, man. You don't need all that fancy gear. Have a great day, all you fathers out there. Happy Father's Day. 
It's a long one. If you stuck through it, which you probably didn't, and shit, I don't blame you. Uh, one final look at what I'm working on in the front here and how I'm building sort of a cool little shelf in front of that bomby because of the, the sand and the way the, the power heads are pushing forward. So, yeah, more work being done. Thanks again.